What is going on, Degenerates UFC 300 weekend? Let's freaking go! Welcome to the undefeated post weigh show. Best MMA betting show on the internet today. I hope you all are feeling it. I'm so ready to go. This card is going to be fan-freaking-tastic. Oh, I'm pumped up. I cannot freaking wait. How is everybody doing? All right. If it is your first time watching the best damn show on the internet today, this is the undefeated post weigh-in show. We have never given a bad read. We have never given a bad bet. Not on this show. Not on this one right freaking here. What we do is we take all the information we've had from the Monday breakdowns, talking with all of our homies, going on other podcasts, being in the DMs. We watch the fighters on the we watch them face off. We make sure the numbers are correct on who's taller and who is longer. Sometimes they're not. And then we put all that info into one spot and help you make good damn bets. That's what this show is for. We wrap it all together. We put a nice little bow on it, and then we fill our pockets on Saturday. What is going on, everybody? All right, let's get straight on into it. We got way too much to talk about. First fight of the night, Davison Figueredo takes on Cody Garbrandt. We've got Figueredo coming in at 135 and a half pounds. Cody Garbrandt, 136. I'll be honest with you. Davison Figueredo moving up uh, uh, 10 pounds. He still looks like he's having a tough time. He still looks like he's having a rough weight cut. He was up there like just embracing the moment. His eyes were closed the entire time he was on the scale. Like I'm getting kind of struggle bus vibes from Davison Figueredo, even with the extra weight. So questions uh cody garbrandt though look great very casual very relaxed no problems with him whatsoever now i gotta say i'm impressed davison figueredo went full on kratos with the red face stripe and everything i am loving it that's my third okay top three favorite video game series of all time was uh halo god of war and Oh, I'm blanking on my favorite game of all time. What the hell is wrong with me? I put myself on the spot. That's a rarity. Anyway, top three. Top three video game of all time. God of War. So absolutely love it. Cody, obviously the bigger of the two, though, right? Like, even though Figgy is moving up and we know he's not a small guy at 135, he's still smaller than Cody Garbrandt. Both guys were, like, fainting and getting after it with each other. This one is still really tough for me, guys. I've said it basically all week. I hate the number here. Davison Figueredo is a minus 310. Cody Garbrandt plus 250. We are seeing Cody Garbrandt in his uh, protect my chin era, in his Arlovsky stage of life. And because of that, He's not putting himself at risk as much as he used to. I think Davison and Figueredo can absolutely find the chin of Cody and knock him out. However, we've got to get a bit of a brawl for that to take place. Now, Dana, up the bonuses, right? We got 300K on the line for everybody on this card now, and I think that could make the difference here, right? I kind of feel like Cody Garbrandt was going to come in with a bit of a get my win and get out of dodge type of game plan. Now that there's 300K on the line, does that change? I don't know. 
I don't know. If we're going brawl for brawl, man, I trust one guy's chin more. If we're going brawl for brawl, I think Davis and Figueredo naturally has, you know, a bit more power. To, power. Cody Garbrandt obviously has, you know, a speed advantage. And when he bites down and he throws that fastball, the one he got Rafael Asuncao with, he can knock anybody out. So both these guys absolutely can finish here. And I still lean Davis and Figueredo in this spot. I just can't wrap my mind around minus 300. When I parlay up the entire card and try and sweep all my picks, I will be picking Davis and Figueredo. I kind of like Davis and Figueredo by knockout, but they're dangling that plus 175 out there like, mm hmm, sus. You know, and I always could see Davis and Figueredo doing the old club and stuff, right? You get Cody hurt, he goes to his wrestling or he jumps on a guillotine. We, we've seen that a lot from Davis and Figueredo. Absolutely something that could take place. So uh, everybody taking the stabs on Cody Garbrandt, I get it. I get it. The line's super wide here. The line is super wide here. I just can't trust the durability. So for me, it's a pass. I'm going to enjoy the first fight of the night and uh, just kind of see what happens on this one. Obviously, live betting is a possibility for some of us here, uh, but I'm not going to be just kind of swimming with the with the stream here, swimming with the crowd and going anything heavy on Davis and Figueredo. Next up, you've got Bobby Green taking on Jim Miller. 156 for Bobby Green, 155 and a half for Jim Miller. Bobby Green... One eye half shut on the scale, guys. I've been talking about this the last couple of times. Bobby's getting concerning with these weigh-ins, right? Like, this man is not supposed to be struggling on the scales the way that he does, but when he gets up there, he looks wiped. He looks exhausted. Now, he always has good cardio. He always fills back up. He always hydrates. He always comes back and, and has a great performance and has cardio. So it's not something I feel like I'm too concerned with as far as his performance in the cage on Saturday, but it just it just bugs me out when he's got one eye that's half shut when he's up there dehydrated. It worries me. Uh, Jim Miller looked fan-freaking-tastic. He's got a little white in the beard but yeah you can't knock the guy for that i'm gonna be joining him here one of these days he gave a solid flex on the scale looks like he's in fantastic shape and that lyme disease has done wonders for jim freaking miller uh bobby green threw his shirt into the crowd on his way up to the scales and i think the shirt like caught one of his rings or something because he had to like jump the fence and go chase it down uh bobby obviously the taller of the two here he was extremely amped up jim miller cool as a cucumber not phased whatsoever by the hype of bobby green jim miller much much thicker physically speaking this one's fun man i love this fight um bobby green by decision was the early uh prediction here on monday when i talked about this one however since dana has announced the bonuses Bobby Green's the type of guy that will take that and run with that shit he already came out in an interview and was like with that on the table like I'm going for it if he goes for it that gives Jim Miller his best chance to win this fight guys so I originally thought Bobby Green stay within yourself box stay behind the jab stay on the outside and that's going to make it real tough for Jim Miller to get into this fight but if Bobby Green is coming forward looking for 300k Jim Miller can win this fight any way he wants like if they're banging it out in the pocket Jim probably has more power than Bobby there's obviously the submission upside here. Any transition they get into, Jim Miller can find the neck. Bobby Green has been cracked a bunch of times recently. He's coming back after a quick, short layoff. Four months ago, he got knocked dead. I mean, Jalen Turner is still wanted by the police for the murder he committed within the octagon. So I think there's a lot of opportunity here for Jim to win this fight now. I've completely flipped on this. I'm going to rock with Jim Miller here. I haven't made a bet. What I think I will do, though, is play the fight doesn't go the distance. We're already talking about how unders look good on this card, just the people you have lined up on this card. But now that we've got that 300K bonus situation, now that we've got these people hunting for finishes and with Bobby's attitude change, I think I like the under here in this spot. I won't have to pick a side. I'm rooting if either one of these guys gets a finish. And on top of that, Make sure you check out the Sharp Action Report, guys. It's right here on Home of Fight. I got Andrew from Superbook Sports on here to talk about the notable action that came in. And their sharp bet on this one was actually an under. They're not picking sides. Whoever the sharp backers are at Superbook Sports, they're looking at violence here in this spot. And especially like I talked about with those other factors, I think that makes a ton of sense. And I'm probably going to end up adding that to my card. Cody's calls. What's up? What's going on? Glad to be here live. Thank you very much for hanging out. All right, next up, we have got Jessica Andrade and Marina Rodriguez next. 116 pounds of peace. Andrade, very relaxed on the scales today. No issues, very confident, smirk, nice little flex from her. Uh, Marina Rodriguez, no problem for her at all. Big, small, I'm sorry, big, small, geez. Big, tall, lanky. That's where I got the small from was the tall tongue twister. My bad. Um, 
big height difference, right? These two ladies face off. We knew this coming in, right? Marina Rodriguez is very, very tall uh, at this weight class, whereas Jessica Andrade is very, very small for this weight class. But Andrade, way thicker. Like, there's a physicality difference between these women. We knew that coming in. So uh, it's going to remind me of the what the uh, Stefan Struve when he fought Pat Perry back in the day. That's kind of how this one sets up to be. Um, I'm on Jessica Andrade, guys. I bet this one at... Uh, minus 135, I think, a little earlier in the week. So Marina Love has come in, so this line has actually dropped a little bit. Andrade is minus 130 is what I'm seeing right now. Um, I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? Uh, but I think Jessica Andrade has the grappling upside that a lot of people kind of aren't considering here in this spot. She hasn't been grappling a lot recently, but it's there. So, like, if she goes with that, then she's going to be capable of winning moments or minutes in this fight that people aren't giving her credit for. And on top of that, when these two are striking – Jessica Andrade is not a zero, right? Marina Rodriguez obviously has the advantage of the length and the height and keeping her at bay, that kind of thing. But if she's able to crash the pocket and close the distance, she's going to rip her up with those hooks to the body. She's going to hurt her with those big, powerful shots. She's got leg kicks she can go to. Like It's not like she's completely out of it if this thing is in striking distance for the full 15 minutes. So... Again, I kind of like the violence under look just because it's an Andrade fight and she always fights to the under. And then I like Jessica Andrade. Uh, I can see her getting a knockout, TKO. I can see her grinding away to a decision. I Believe it or not, she could get a submission. If she keeps uh, Rodriguez on her back in this fight, there's definitely a chance that she's going to be able to land something and, and get a sub. The club and sub is always live. Um, so yeah, I like Jessica Andrade here in this spot and I'm not budging off of that. Leon, my guy in the chat, uh, asking any PFL up in the background. Obviously, it's right, right there. I'm watching the PFL. I'm sweating this bad boy out. <laughs> um, I'm just tailing a couple people. I, with all the content I've been doing for UFC 300 this week, haven't even had a time to look at the PFL stuff. So I'm just kind of degening out and watching it as a fan. Nothing official, nothing big or anything like that. Um, Hanato Moicano takes on Jalen Turner up next. 156 pounds for Hanato Moicano, 155 and a half for Jalen Turner. Moicano giving the mean mug as always, looking good up there on the scales. Jalen Turner absolutely shredded dude as always like i say it every time this guy weighs in i have no clue how he makes 155 pounds on top of that we talked about the bobby green knockout this guy had to turn around and cut weight again that's impressive as shit coming back four months later and making that cut to 155 the way this guy does he is freaking huge and one of the things we talked about over the course of the week was yeah jalen turner's big but moicano is not a small 155er they face off and turner still's got about a half head on this guy so against another one of the bigger guys in the weight class, one of the taller guys in the weight class, Turner still is just towering over this man. Like, I, I've got Turner in a parlay, guys. I'm a little worried about it. He's definitely one of those, like, parlay buster range type of guys. Uh, but at the same time, I think he's got big finishing upside here. And he fought very closely with a couple of really tough motherfuckers in his last couple of fights and got the wrong side of split decisions. Gotta hope that karma kind of swings back his way. I'm expecting he finishes this thing early more often than not. But if it does happen to go late, Jalen Turner's not a zero. And even though Moicano is a big time submission grappling threat, he's not the wrestling threat that some of his past opponents have been. So I think there's an opportunity for Turner to keep this thing standing, land some damage, be the one that's getting off a little bit more often with the damaging shots. And, and hopefully the judges will reward us for that but again like i said big powerful clinch knees elbows i think this one probably ends early more often than not moicano's really gonna have to dig deep and be a son of a bitch to drag this thing late totally possible not saying he can't do it but it's just gonna be a tough tall uh tough tough task there we go diego lopez up next takes on sodique Youssef. we got 146 pounds for both men in this one here uh diego lopez is built dude strong flex crazy abs this guy's looking great up there lopez just never fails to amaze me i love the uh the hype around this guy i love the upswing here i, I love what he's doing in the cage sadiq Youssef absolutely stone cold on the scale today he's a thick boy no problems for him whatsoever great stare down Youssef's got an absolutely massive head i've talked about that before i think that's why people have a hard time actually knocking him out he gets rocked he gets wobbled he gets hurt but he never actually gets like clean straight up ko'd and it's probably because he's got that huge noggin the way that uh uh volkanovsky it was really hard to get him out of there until a certain point as well for the same reason uh very good stare down both these guys know what's on the line this is very intense lopez is bigger taller longer and i think that's going to be a big factor in this fight right when they car crash i think he's going to get to the button a little bit faster uh, i've talked about this one and i feel like the line should maybe be flipped. Like I feel like Sadiq Youssef is maybe getting the raw end of the deal here, and he should probably be favored in this spot. But I'm still picking Lopez to win the fight. Now, 
the sports gambler in me, always looking for the best line. You know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of stupid shit this weekend. I probably should just go ahead and bet Diego anyway, right? Because of all the other stupid stuff that I'm doing. Um, I'm, for some reason, dying on the hill that because Lopez isn't the underdog, I'm not going to bet him. I'm picking him to win. I'm picking him to win. I should probably just go ahead and sack up. Minus 135 is not that big of a price. I can play this guy if I really want to. Guys, I have the biggest bet of my life, and I've done some really stupid parlays this weekend. Gambling. This weekend for UFC 300, bankroll management's completely out the window. Gone, done, out the window. I have big bets. I have multiple big bets. I'm probably going to end up betting every single fight on this card in some form or fashion just for S's and G's. So this could be like a massive weekend for me, or it could also be like a massive digging a hole for me this week. We'll find out which one it ends up being. Uh, but I'm talking myself into playing Diego Lopez just to ride the train with my guy because he's on a heater and I love what's going on with him. And if he wins and I don't bet him and I don't cash with him, I'm going to be a little sad. I really will. <laughs> Next up, you've got Kayla Harrison taking on Holly freaking home. 136 pounds for both women on the dot. And Kayla Harrison, folks, Oh, she was gaunt. That's not a word I use lightly. You could see this woman's skull at the weigh-ins this morning. Like, I have no idea, no earthly clue how she managed to get her body down to 135 pounds. It was rough on her. Her eyes were sunken in. You could see the, the bones in her facial structure popping out through her skin. It was scary, man. Holly Holm shredded as always. She's made a you know a career of this making 135. She's fine. She you know it looks like she had a tough cut, but at the same time, totally made it not an issue. Kayla looked amazing at the ceremonials. I love pay per view cards because when we watch the regular just fight nights, you don't get to see what they look like rehydrated because they face off immediately after weigh ins, and that always kind of skews our opinion, right? But Kayla Harrison looked fan fantastic she rehydrated and boy did she blow the fuck up like i thought she was going to be kind of sort of in the ballpark home but it's not even close she is almost as tall as holly is almost obviously to holly's got a height advantage but she's like twice as thick as holly holm is this fight is absolutely a setup for Kayla Harrison. Now, the tinfoil hat doesn't need to tell you that, but I, it was a good opportunity to break it out. The UFC is doing something very obvious here in this spot. I'm going to be playing Kayla Harrison inside the distance. One thing that people haven't talked enough about is the elbows. She couldn't use elbows in the PFL. She's allowed to use elbows in the UFC. And Holly Holm has never fought somebody with the physical nature of someone like Kayla Harrison in the UFC. If anyone's ever going to be able to out push Holly or be able to out drag Holly, take her down, it's going to be someone like Kayla Harrison. And people are talking about how Kayla's just a, a judo player. Guys, she's not just a judo player. Go back and watch the last couple of her recent fights. She is now chaining takedowns like freaking Marab. Like she'll hit a blast double, transition to a single, then she'll hit a trip and then she'll treetop you like she's got a wide variety of takedowns now more so than just looking to hip throw somebody and frankly if she wants to hip throw holly home i'll bet you she could send her about eight feet like that's not going to stop her she is so big she's gonna make a statement on saturday guys it's gonna be kayla harrison it's gonna be kayla harrison inside the distance now i personally think that it's gonna be a sub I think it's going to be Kayla Harrison by submission because she'll do kind of the position over submission thing and just kind of anaconda choke her way to the top, get on top of Holly, make sure Holly can't move, smother her, and then she will find her way to like an arm triangle or something like that. That's how I think this fight goes. So I'm picking Kayla Harrison by sub, but don't count out her just raining down punches. Holly is 42 years old, folks. She is nine years younger than her if she gets on top of her and lands even like two elbows and just like busts her open holly could be done and not only that but the official could step in and save her like we've seen that before when there's blood involved in women's mma fights it seems like the referees are a lot quicker to step in and say hey that's not okay here and, and go ahead and pull this one so i absolutely think kayla harrison is getting a big big finish on Saturday. And at plus money, I like the inside the distance prop. They're giving us plus 130, and it seems like it might be a sucker bet. I think it's like the reverse think here, right? Like, oh, they're giving me plus money. It's a sucker bet. I'm not going to play it. Well, no, I'm fucking playing it. Like, if this is, if they're dangling this thing out there and Holly Holm survives for 15 minutes and we get a boring, grindy decision, you got me. You got me. I'm taking inside the distance. There's Leon. There's D. What's up, everybody? Thanks for hanging out here. We got Steven in the house. Kyle Marley, legendary. My guy. We're going to have to get you back on the pod sooner than later. Gregory, what is 
up. Hope everybody's kicking ass today. Uh, Calvin Cater up next, taking on Aljamain Sterling. 145 and a half for Calvin Cater, 146 for Aljamain Sterling. Calvin Cater, guys, dialed the fuck in in great shape this guy looks fantastic and i heard some interviews with him where he was talking about like he could have come back sooner and he decided against it he could have come back and was like you know what let's make sure we've checked off all the boxes he is ready to go coming back in this fight aljermaine sterling all smiles on the scale guys you know i've given the guy shit but i got to give him his flowers where it's due i try to be unbiased he looks fantastic at this point Oh, Gamblestein, what's up? There you go. There's your there's your shout out, even though you were giving me shit on Leon's show. <laughs> uh, Liam's show the other night. It's all good. It's all good. It's all I don't mind a little. I don't mind a little shit. That's what's up. <laughs> um, so we've got uh you now the, okay, Gamblestein, you made me lose my train of thought. That's on you. <laughs> So Aljo looks fantastic at this weight class, guys. Uh, I, I think he still had to cut some weight to get down here at this point, but he definitely looks way more filled out, way more inflated. His flex is very impressive. Lots of muscle on that body. But guys, Calvin Cater is big. Calvin Cater is so freaking big. And that's something I think a lot of people are just kind of discrediting. They're like, oh, Aljo's going to take him down. Of course he is. Is he though? Calvin Cater's got like a full head on Aljamain Sterling and he's used to fighting people at this size, and he's got a 90% takedown defense. Like, yes, I know he's coming off of an injury, but I think there's a very real possibility that Calvin Cater schools Aljamain Sterling at 145 pounds. I can see that being a very real possibility, and so I have bet it. I have money on Calvin Cater, three units, and I already took the plus 500 uh, shot here at Calvin Cater by KO. Aljamain doesn't like getting hit, guys. Calvin Cater goes at it in close with, like, knees and elbows and shit like that, and he's got volume for days when they're stuck at range. People talking about, like, the technical kicking game of Aljamain Sterling, I don't understand. I don't understand. He can't harm a fly with that kicking game. He doesn't have any power on the feet whatsoever. And when you're facing guys that are, like, six inches shorter than you, that works great to just, like, keep them at bay. But this isn't Pedro Munoz, son. Calvin Cater's not going to have any issue walking through one of those kicks and punching you in the mouth. And if he does that, that's going to shut that game plan down real quick. I like Calvin Cater a lot in this spot. And I know a lot of people are all piling in on Aljamain Sterling. He's a new fan favorite. I freaking love this spot. I'm, I'm going to fade the shit out of Aljamain Sterling moving up a weight class here. Love Calvin Cater. I'm absolutely going hard in this spot. And do with that information what you will. <laughs> Next up, you got Cody Brundage taking on Bo Nickel to kick off the main card of UFC 300. 186 pounds for both men here in this spot. Cody Brundage, a bit of a blank stare on his face this morning. He looked rough, man. He was blinking it out on the scales. Obviously a bit of a tough cut. Uh, Bo Nickel, kind of the same thing as far as the blank stare goes. And he's got a bit of a soft body, I'll be honest with you. Not that, they, you know, Patrick Mahomes body comparison, whatever. Uh, he's still absolutely an elite athlete. You don't have to have abs uh, to be able to have the kind of performances we know Bo Nickel is capable of. But just interesting. Uh, both guys very calm at the faceoff, which was a little bit surprising, I guess. But Bo is freaking huge, guys. This was one that I really wanted to wait for now obviously i already played my cody brundage round one kotk or dq system play system bet right we were two and oh we're on a two game win streak here with that one so we might as well go right back to the well uh but I, he, this you know obviously this probably isn't the one where that takes place my official prediction is uh bo nickel by ground and pound tko in the second round i think cody brundage is going to do whatever he can to survive and this is uh going to be a spot where Bo Nickel takes his time, but eventually does get there. He is bigger than Cody Brundage. He's got a height advantage, and that's a big deal to me because Cody's a big guy, man. Like People forget how big Cody Brundage is against some of his other opponents in there, and Bo's got him outsized. Big deal. Really big deal. It's Bo. It's Bo whenever he wants to. I'm hoping it's TKO rather than sub, but hey, that's just me. And this is why... We do the live show. Sorry, guys. I skipped over that one. Jays, you're absolutely right. Yuri Prohaska and Alexander Rakic. Somehow I popped right over that one here in my notes. I'm getting too excited. Uh, Yuri comes in at 206. Alexander Rakic matches him at 206 pounds as well. Yuri intense as ever. This seriously is like the awkward kid that likes Naruto in your school who just decided to go ahead and train to be a ninja anyway and stuck to it his entire life. And somehow that granted him superpowers. That's who Yuri is. It worked for him. He's a freak. Um, you've got his opponent, Alexander Rakic, who's just a big old dude. Very muscle. Big man. Big, big body here. Uh, very intense 
face off between these two. And I got to tell you guys, I love the chip on Yuri's shoulder here. He put his fist like right up to the side of the head of Rakic and he's got a big ass fist, man. Like that guy's got some meat hooks on him. Big, big hands. And I think it's funny because uh, Rakic pissed off Yuri calling him like a fake samurai or whatever. I actually think Yuri took that very personally. This guy is a dude that's super calm, super friendly, very respectful. And even though he likes to fight, this was a different Yuri intensity coming in this spot. He wants to kill Rakic. And I think he's gonna. I got plus 100, I believe. I bet Yuri for two units. And uh, I like him inside the distance in this spot. Rakic very much has tall man's defense. He very much throws with his hands down. His head is always open. He relies on head movement. And he relies on his ability to tank some damage to be able to go ahead and survive those exchanges. I don't think that's going to work against Yuri. And then when Rakic does shoot takedowns, his timing you can see coming from like a mile away. And I don't think takedowns are going to work on you. He rolls, he bucks, he gets back up. He's not going to be like Jan Bohovic and just lay on his back in like a turtle shell position and let him sit on top of him for 15 straight minutes. He'll work back up to the feet. He'll roll in reverse. He'll do whatever it takes to get back where he can deal damage to this guy. So I think Rakic is going to slow down. I think he's going to tire out. I think it's probably a later finish, quite frankly, but eventually Yuri's going to find the chin of Alexander Rakic. Probably late round two, early round three, something like that. And uh, Doodles, you are right on the money with me. I would play inside the distance if you're going to do something like that with Yuri instead of the KO because ITD is like plus 150. KO is like plus 180. The sub for Yuri Prohaska is like plus 1,000. This guy wrapped up a neck on Glover Teixeira in the deepest of deep fights in the fifth round, tapped out a Brazilian legend who's a black belt. Like... He absolutely can tap out Rakic. If Rakic is the type of motherfucker who just refuses to die, he does have a chin, it holds up, Yuri beats the brakes off of him, but he won't go away, you grab a neck. You grab a neck. And if that happens, he's capable of it. Rakic will present it with the grappling exchanges. I think Yuri by sub is absolutely on the table, you guys. That's a that's tinfoil hat worthy right there. But I think Yuri sub is absolutely on the table at 10 to 1 and those late round sprinkles. In fact, give me a second. Let me let me look what those numbers actually are. Cause I was gonna I was gonna speculate, but I've got my computer here. So why bother doing that? I'll just tell you. Um, let's see. Yuri round three, round two sub is 25 to 1, and round three sub is 45 to 1 on DraftKings. I probably will end up sprinkling those here in this spot. Like I said, inside the distance versus money line, it's like minus 105 to plus 150. You're not getting a huge bonus there, so you might as well take the even money on the money line. I think that makes just a ton more sense. And if you're going to take the KO, take the inside the distance instead. It covers your ass so you don't lose out in case he grabs a neck. And I think the 10 to 1 submission prop is just super live in this spot because these guys that refuse to go away, these guys that are just so tough and durable, when they get tired, the way you finish them is either the ref pulling you off because they have no answer or <laughs> you grab a neck and you tap them out. I absolutely think that's possible in this spot. All right, let's freaking go, everybody. I got to skip over Cody Brundage and Boneco because we went out of order. That's my bad. Charles Oliveira takes on Armin Saryukian. Both win, both men, weigh 156 pounds here in this spot. Oliveira shredded as freaking ever. This guy gets sucked out on the scales always he's transitioned up to 155 very very well he does have a weight cut here it is tough on him but you know what he always looks fantastic and he's got that aura about him he's got that attitude charlie oh everybody knows the man armin saryukian massive flex this guy is jacked my god what are they feeding armin saryukian it's all the good stuff, I promise you. The scene when Rocky is fighting uh, Drago and he's in like the Russian lab and they like stick him right in the shoulder with the needle. That's got to be how things are going in the training camp of Armin Saryukian. Uh, these guys went head to head, man. They faced off. It was intense as ever. Saryukian like shoves Oliveira with his forehead off of him. And uh, Charles, obviously the taller of the two. Armin, obviously the thicker of the two. Both guys are ready to rock. Both guys are so ready to go in this spot. And guys, I hate to say it. I love Charles Oliveira as much as you do. I really do. I think it's Saryukian's time. If he wants to wrestle in this spot, he can. 
Charles Oliveira is more than willing to give up a takedown, go to his back, play jujitsu off of his back. And then when they're striking, when Armin goes, he's going to explode and be so much faster than Charles Oliveira. Now, he has to control the fight, obviously, because if he can't take down Charles or if he can't keep down Charles, that's when people have that oh shit moment when they're fighting Charles Oliveira and they're stuck on the feet and they're stuck at the end of his kicks. They're stuck at his range. I just don't see that being a problem for Armin. I mean, obviously, I'm not saying he's going to walk through him or anything like that, but he will be able to catch kicks he will be able to level change he will be able to go all in or all out and then when he crashes the pocket he's got power in his hands guys and when he gets on the ground with charles trying to play jujitsu from his back this guy's got multiple ground and pound tko knockouts i like armin here i hate to say it um i know i know guys for the culture i, I want to see charles Oliveira get the the rematch title shot i really do but it's it's armin it's armin for me guys i've got him in a parlay he's closing out my parlay with uh none other than jalen turner and i'm a little nervous about that turner spot i know too many smart people on moicano what i might actually do is parlay up armin saryukian with kayla harrison at this point you're getting like minus 130 on that and i think that's really good I think those two legs are coming through. You don't have to worry about inside the distance. If we get to a decision, you're still going to be live there instead of getting freaky with the props. Um, that's a two-legger parlay that I think really stands a decent chance. Now, obviously, you're fading Charles Oliveira, and that's terrifying. But at the same time, I do think that Armin Saryukian wins this fight. All right, everybody, BMF time. First off, give me a break. This is Home of Fight, everybody. If you haven't subscribed, if you haven't gotten on the channel here for the show, this is where we're at from now on. Please subscribe. I literally got a message this afternoon. So those of you that are like, Clint, shut the fuck up about Home of Fight, we know. I had a guy DM me on Instagram asking me where the show is. People still don't know, so I have to keep saying it. Like, subscribe, hang out here, home of fight. Let's freaking go. Uh, we've got Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway, both guys tapping in here at 156 pounds. Classic Justin Gaethje on the scales today. No issues for him whatsoever. He always kind of looks the same. Max Holloway, however, looks fantastic fantastic up at 155 absolutely still shredded this time around but he looks like he added some muscle by the way i fucked with some of you guys i photoshopped kayla harrison's arms onto max holloway i even like shaded the color so it looks like it's the right skin tone for max and i actually went so far as to photoshop his tattoos back on top of those arms and i've got people on the internet thinking that's a real photo i can't believe it i thought it was obvious like i thought people would look at it because they were posting all the kayla harrison stuff and they'd immediately just like see it and be like dude this those are kayla's arms and a couple of you did but a couple people were like he's gonna gas out man <laughs> guys it's it's fake it's fake anyway i do think max looks a whole hell of a lot better up at 155 pounds he moved up the correct way this time holloway slightly taller I, th I thought they were pretty even as far as like the height and the reach goes when they're both like decked out wearing shoes and they're in their uh in their uh their civilian clothes but then when we get on the scale and they've got their shirts off and they're barefoot like holloway's a little bit taller than gaethje not that it matters it's it's such a, a small thing it's negligible but you would think the guy coming up from 145 is probably the slightly smaller guy no he's the slightly taller guy justin obviously a decent bit thicker even with the extra muscle that max holloway has put on justin is a big thick boy up at 155 pounds um uh, guys i did go ahead and bet max holloway in this spot and this number is crashing he opened up all the way up at like plus 225 plus 230 something like that he's plus 124 now like it is a flood of money coming in here on max holloway and all i've heard about is people parlaying justin gaethje when he was around minus 200 everybody thinks this is a dead nuts justin gaethje bmf spot however the line is moving and it's moving drastically the other way uh what i also did and i know some of you think i'm absolutely insane for but here we freaking go max holloway has been training his grappling ladies and gentlemen he is tired of getting punched in the face we've seen him go for way more submissions in his last couple fights than we ever have in the past it's a thing he's absolutely going for it i have sprinkled the max holloway rounds three four and five submission props it was round three sub 80 to one it was round four sub 100 to one it was round five sub 110 to one it's now 70 to one 80 to one and 90 to one they have dropped those numbers a couple of people probably have tailed me on that and they've got more exposure on those numbers than they would like uh i think this is kind of a, a jose aldo type of fight right like we've got justin gagey who's gonna come out like a house on freaking fire and as long as max holloway can survive that early blitz he's gonna take over 
He's going to have more volume. He's going to have the cleaner striking. He's going to be more elusive on the feet. And when he mixes in the grappling, we've seen that just be the death knell for Justin Gaethje. He doesn't handle it well when people can get on top of him or take his back. And when he gets punched, Gaethje gets hurt. Guys, Max Holloway still has never been knocked out. I mean, people, like right now, we've, we've got uh, Ostradamus in the chat saying that Max Holloway's washed. Is he, though? Is he? Like, people say he looks bad, but guys, the only guy he's lost to is Alexander Volkanovsky. The only guy. And so he's one and four, uh, four and one in his last five fights with the only loss coming by decision over 25 minutes to Alexander Volkanovsky. And he knocked out the Korean zombie in his last win. So like he's not washed at all to me and he still hasn't been clipped and knocked down or knocked out. Like this guy's impossible to put away. Now, Justin Gaethje's sure as hell going to test that. I am not blind to the threat of Justin Gaethje's power, right? Like this guy just knocked out Dustin Poirier through a fully blocked kick. So it's completely possible that Justin Gaethje just chins Max Holloway and sends him back down to 145 or hell, even into retirement. But I'm not going to bank on that until I see it. I'm not going to bank on Max Holloway getting knocked out until I actually watch it happen because people keep saying it's going to happen and then it just keeps not happening. So I'm on Max Holloway. You know, <laughs> God bless anybody who wants to join me on this one. The number's gone, guys. At this point, I mean, I would almost consider maybe passing. I kind of feel like any plus money is good money on this one with Max Holloway, but you're running out of plus money. He, he's plus 125, so if you want the Holloway side, get in before it's gone. It's not wrong to stay away at this point because when a guy was plus 200 a couple weeks ago and now you're plus 120, it's not sexy. I get that. Um, so do what you will. This one, I am on the Max Holloway side and it's going to be a butt clincher because he's going to have to go through fire and hell, uh, to get Justin Gaethje out of there later in these deep rounds. Co-main event time. Wiley Zhang takes on Yan Zhao Nan, 115 pounds for both women here. And Zhang Wiley absolutely goes in the uh, adorable badass category for me here. She's one of the most awesome women on the freaking planet. One of the most dangerous human beings on planet Earth, man or woman. And she's adorable. She has big, <laughs> big, fantastic smiles. She's always cracking jokes. She's always smiling. I love her. I absolutely love her. Yan Zhao Nan looked good on the scales today. Also, no problem for her. The difference here for me, though, Yan is big, guys. Like... She looked massive at the uh, ceremonials, but apparently she was wearing heels or something like that. She's still bigger, though. She's still bigger than Zhang Wiley when they face off here today. Uh, this is a spot where I've said multiple times, I just don't have a good read, you guys. It seems like everybody is anchoring their parlays on Zhang Wiley, and why wouldn't you? I know Yan just got outed in the grappling very recently, and we know that's a thing that Zhang likes to go to, but it's not like she can't work on some takedown defense and maybe have improved in that area. We've seen Zhang Wiley starched and hurt early in fights before four and yan just knocked out jessica andrage with a, a single punch so like there's definitely some flukish round one early knockout type of upside here for yan jan and and if zhang wiley isn't strong enough to keep her on the mat if yan has worked on like let's say her get up game or something like that and this fight gets extended there's definitely opportunities where yan can hurt her the deeper this fight goes the thing i'm i'm considering buying in here on is the fight doesn't go the distance um we've got a three and a half total here and a uh, fight doesn't go the distance is like minus 165. You know, I, I do think whoever wins this fight probably styles on their opponent. If Zhang gets on top, she's going to kind of like elbow Yan to death or she's going to sub her or something along those lines. If Yan has this fight going her way, it's because she's probably boxing Zhang Wiley up. And if that's happening, she probably finishes Zhang Wiley. So I really think violence is the side here on this one. And I'll probably, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm in a bet of four and a half or if I'll just chalk up and play fight doesn't go the distance, but that's the way I'm looking on the co-main event because I can't pick a side here. Um, given the things I'm talking about, though, 14 to 1, Yan by KO. Yan KO 1, 2, 3? You know, those are the kinds of spots where it's like 50 to 1, 55 to 1, 60 to 1. Like, those might get some sprinkles. You know, if I'm looking to degen out, not put big money on it, but have something to sweat, those are the ones... Uh, that I would be tempted at looking at here for this fight. But again, guys, of all the fights, of all the fights on this card that I've said, like, hey, this is what I might bet. This is my least confident one is the co-main event. So don't buy into what I'm selling for the co-main because I'm really not trying to sell you anything. Main event time, guys. Alex Pereira comes in at 205. Jamal freaking Hill comes in at 205. 05 on the dot championship weight Pereira came in very intense huge flex on the scale looked fantastic Jamal Hill also looked 
fantastic. This man has abs, ladies and gentlemen. All I heard for the last two weeks was how Jamal Hill was fat, how he was out of shape, how he was tubby, how he wasn't going to... He's in the best shape of his life for this fight. We've never seen abs like that on Jamal Hill. And I just want to set the record straight here for this one, guys. He doesn't have the muscle monster body type. People look at this guy and they're like, oh, he's pudgy. He's... Look at like Oleg Zaychuk, for example. That guy dropped a weight class and still has like a pudgy little tummy. Not all people are built to have shred abdominal muscles showing. He's got a weird body type and he's in the best shape of his life for this fight. You can see the muscle when he flexes, when he's up there, you can see the abs. They're there. They just don't show because of the way this guy is built more often than not the rest of the time he's walking around. This was a very intense face off up here um hill pounding his chest he's got a chip on his shoulder coming into this fight i freaking love it Pereira's pissed off that jamal hill uh, did the little little tiki statue dude at the uh, ceremonials and they're really gonna not like each other in the cage tomorrow i am so looking forward to this one man and i've made my stance extremely clear uh, you guys know this is the biggest bet of my lifetime. You understand this is a once-in-a-lifetime non-bankroll stunt. We're counting it as a seven-unit max bet for like tracking purposes uh, because we don't want to count it as like a more than half my bankroll type of bet, obviously. Uh, so this one is is going to get wild for me, guys. And uh, one of my absolute favorite quotes that I'm tweaking just a little bit here for you is, uh, courage is knowing that it might hurt and doing it anyway stupidity is the exact same thing and that's why gambling is hard the original quote is that's why life is hard but it makes a whole lot of sense to me for gambling here i'm gonna choose to go with the courage side of things and pray that i'm not the stupid guy here on this one but it is what it is uh all my chips are in on jamal hill with him looking the way he does with the chip on his shoulder the way he is with how intense he's looking up there right now i couldn't love this situation anymore i absolutely am all in on jamal freaking hill i've talked about this fight more times than i can count i've broken it down technically for you guys more times than i can count and there's plenty of people out there that will tell you the pros and cons of alex prayer and jamal hill not me not today jamal freaking hill gets his belt back tomorrow and still as far as i'm concerned because the man never lost it and knew jamal hill that's what's going on here folks that was the undefeated post way and show you do with this information what you will i hope we all smash the bookies and make absolute piles of cash tomorrow i'm gonna go take my wife and child out to a wonderful dinner while we've got the opportunity because I'm going to be MIA tomorrow with drinks in hand, eating some chicken wings, cash and text, and filling my pockets. I hope you all have a wonderful evening as well. And hit me online if you have any questions or anything like that. Obviously, I'm happy to chat with you guys over there. Does anybody else have any other stupid questions for me tonight? Thank you. Have a good night. And that's it. We're out. <laughs> Let's roll, everybody.